Welcome back to our programming 101. We're talking about how to create amazing graphics using ggplot. ggplot is one of the packages within the tidyverse. So we always say library tidyverse and that installs the whole bunch of them. One of them is ggplot. Let's get going. If you want to learn about R programming, then you have come to the right place. On this YouTube channel, we're creating R programming videos on everything. We're going to be talking today about how to create a graphic where you've got more than one, let's say two numeric variables and one categorical variable, right? Uh, just for summary, categorical variables are variables that will take your data set and divide it into categories, right? Different buckets, green eyes, blue eyes, brown eyes. Numeric variables, anything that lands on a number line, height, weight, body, bada bing, bada boom, right? You with me? Now, if we want to plot, and you can see on the screen at the moment, right, what have we got here? We've got age, and always remember that when we plot, when we use a Cartesian plane like this, usually the x-axis by convention will be the independent variable. Okay, and the y-axis will be the dependent variable. In other words, the values on the y-axis are somehow dependent on what's happening on the x-axis. Does that make sense? Right, so as age goes up, the circumference of these trees becomes larger. We don't think that the causal relationship is the other way around. We don't think that as the circumference goes, if, if you change the circumference of a tree, that that's somehow going to change the age of the tree, right? The causal relationship is age goes up, circumference goes up concomitantly, right? And we've got three different types of trees in this particular graphic. We've got tree number three, five, and four. Don't worry about the names of them. And these each get a different color and a different line. We're going to talk about how to create that graphic, how to create different versions of this sort of thing, how to represent that data. Now, just to quickly, quickly summarize, let's just look at my screen over here. We've got library tidyverse that's getting the packages in play. Uh, data, open, close brackets, that will take you to a, a list of data sets that are built into R. You have these data sets on your computer, and that means that everything I do on the screen today, you can do at home. You can copy my code and see if you can come up with the same outcomes, or you can try and do a better job than me using the same data. Right. I'm not going to be using the M sleep for today's lesson. I'm going to be using another one called Orange. These are orange trees, right? So if we just want to have a look at this data, view with a capital V, capital O for orange. This is one of the built-in data sets. It's in R, and we can see we've got trees. Each tree has been given a number. Now, while these are numbers, this is not a numeric variable. These numbers are actually the names of the trees in this particular experiment. These trees could be called oaks or you know uh, sycamore, blah, blah, blah. They just happen to have a number as their name. Uh, these numbers actually represent categories. So the tree in this particular example is a categorical variable. Age, of course, is numeric. Circumference is numeric. So we've got three variables. Let's talk about how to, to visualize that. Um, I want to just quickly take a quick second just to get to where we are to revise the, the different types of variables that we've got. So I'm just going to quickly go back here and say, just, just for context, if you've got a single categorical variable, if it was just the trees or just eye color, you count them up, you create a bar chart. I've flipped the bar chart on its side because I think it's easier to read that way. That's just me. Okay, that's a single categorical, a single numeric, right? So if it was just age, for example, we take all the observations and we put them into bins or buckets, you know, and each of these bins has got a range 0 to 5, 5 to 10, et cetera, et cetera. And we count up how many of the observations land up in each of those bins and we draw a histogram. Can you see a histogram? It's very similar to a bar chart, but instead of it being categories, it's bins and each bin is a range of values. Okay, so that's a single numeric variable. Then of course you can have two numerics and, and if, so in this example, body weight and brain weight, right? These are both uh, numeric variables. You plot one against the other. Now, always remember that by convention, the independent variable is on the x-axis and the dependent variable is on the y-axis, right? So we think that the values on the y-axis are somehow a function of the changes on the x-axis, right? And in this particular example, we've got two numerics, right? On the x and the y-axis. And then we've also included more numerics, the number of hours spent awake and the number of hours spent sleeping as size and color uh, on, in this particular plot, right? So those are numeric variables. If you've got a categorical, like these are what animals eat, omnivores, insecticide, insectivores, herbivores, carnivores, and total sleep, a box plot is the best thing to use. 
50% of the data sits inside the box. The middle line is the median. Uh, and then you've got the whiskers, which are 1.5, uh, the interquartile range. Okay, that's a box plot. If you've got, now, this is a density plot, right? And it's one, it's one categorical variable. In this case, we've just got carnivores and omnivores. And one numeric variable, the total. The y-axis here is and what we mean by a density plot. It's very, very similar to a histogram. But a density plot is telling you the probability uh, between zero and one at any point, um, uh, at any point along the x-axis of that being the value, and uh, and so you get this density plot. And we overlay one of the next. We're now able to distinguish to each category and the numeric variable. Okay. Right. Let's get into uh, the data that we're looking at now. Right. We're talking about this data set here. Right. Uh, we've said it's uh, these are orange trees. And we've got three variables. Now, I've got this code here, and I'm just gonna, if I run this code, it's gonna, it will give you, it'll give you this graph that we've got down here. I'm gonna walk through the code just to so you can see how I got there. And then I'm actually gonna show you perhaps a better way of visualizing the same data. So this is one way of doing it. This, in this particular example, this is not the best way, but there's, there are lessons to learn here, so, so stick with me. Right, when we use ggplot, there's three things that we want to tell R, right? This is the grammar of graphics. First of all, what data should ggplot look at? Secondly, how should it map the various variables against the various aesthetics, right? The aesthetics, size, uh, color, shape, uh, X and Y axis, et cetera. Those are the aesthetics. And, and you've got to tell R which variables to map against which aesthetics. And then you've got to tell R what geometry to use draw a dot, draw a line, create a histogram, et cetera, et cetera. Those are the three most important uh, components of ggplot, and, and we call this the grammar of graphics. Now, here's ggplot here. Ordinarily, when we say ggplot, we would ordinarily say data is equal to and type in the name of, of the data set. We don't need to because we're working in the tidyverse. We can pipe the data set in. Now, why that's beautiful is because while we're piping it in, on its way to ggplot, and you see, we started with orange. He has the pipe operator, which means we'll take everything there, pipe it into the next line. While we pipe it in, we can make changes. We can filter it. We can select certain variables, et cetera, et cetera. So in this case, just as a way of illustrating that, I've said, let's take the orange, that's this data set, pipe it into a filter, so filter. And we want this filter to take the tree variable and look at this, that means does not equal to two, right? The, the two is the, the one of the categories. The exclamation mark in front of the uh, equals means does not equal two. If we remove that exclamation mark, exclamation mark would have to put in two equal signs and that would say we, we want, we're only going to look at variables at rows or observations where the variable tree is equal to two. The two uh, the two equal signs are the same as saying, is this equal to? It's asking a question. If we remove one of them and we put a exclamation mark, it means is not equal to. So we only want to choose observations where in the variable tree, it's the case that it, it, that the two is not there. In other words, it's saying remove remove the twos, remove any row that's got the two in, in the tree. Sorry, this is that's kind of a long way winded way of saying it. And we pipe that into ggplot. ggplot now knows what data we're using. We don't need to tell it. Good. The next thing is we're going to do the mapping. You could say mapping equals aesthetics. We don't need to. ggplot knows that that's what we're going to do. The first argument in the aesthetics is always the x-axis. The second argument is always the y-axis. We could say x is equal to that and y is equal to that. We don't need to, right? But anyway, I'll just put that in so you know what's happening here. We're saying we're going to map out age on the x-axis and circumference, tree circumference on the y-axis. And then let's see what, if we just, if we'll just, I'll just take away, I'll just take away that, that plus, so we only run the code up to there. If we just said gg point, this is the geometry, it would just draw a dot where, for each observation, the dot would be whatever the circumference and the age, you know, mapped out against the circumference and the age, right? We can add on top of that, we can add a, a smoothed, Linear model, that's got a standard area around it. That's a smooth linear model. And then 
look at what we can do here. Now we talk, because we said we want to map out two numeric variables, age and circumference, and a new and a categorical, right? So now we can do facet wrap by tree. Remember we said the tree is actually, all of these numbers are actually categories, and we've created a new graph for each of the categories. Now the reason I said, and then I've said theme, black and white, that's kind of a nice theme to use. And I've said labs, which is for labels. I'm not gonna re redefine the X and the Y, they're fine, but title I needed to stick in there. Now, th the reason that this is not a good graph in this set of circumstances is when you look at this graph, we can't really see the difference between you know, these quadrants. I mean, you, you, looking at it, it's difficult to say is one steeper than the other is. Does one go higher? I don't know. You can look at it. If you look closely, maybe you could. I can't, you know what I mean? I think it, th this graphic doesn't really say anything to me. So this was a nice lesson that we've learned. Okay, you can use these facets. Some of the time, that's the best way to do it. In this case, not the best way. So what else can we do? Let me run this second set of code and here, this is a much, I think this is a much better representation of the same data. And I'll show you in a second how we got to it. But, um, and in this case, actually, by the way, just so that you know, I've said tree, I've just, just to illustrate it so that you learn a little bit more about filtering, I've said tree is not equal to one and is not equal to two. Okay, which means that it's only gonna draw lines for three, four, and five. Right, so that's, and by the way, that can be up here I just like to stick it on the next line because I think it's a bit neater. Okay, so that's our filter. Data goes in, we do a filter, we take out two of the categories, we left with three, four, and five. Um, now, age and circumference are again the X and the Y axes respectively, but this time instead of doing facets, okay, I've layered, I've used, I've included the idea of color equals tree as one of the aesthetics, right? So now I, I've done geo and point, I've, I've drawn the dots. I've made the size bigger and I've made the, the dots slightly transparent just because I think it looks nicer. That's not an important part of this, this graphic. Uh, and then I've added on top of that a geo line, which just joins the dots up. And, uh, and I've used the, the minimum theme. I think that's it's kind of neat and tidy and I've added in the label. Okay, so can you see how this graphic, I can actually, looking at it, I can see, ah, okay, the tree number three, is a slightly shallower trajectory. Tree number four uh, it has got a much steeper trajectory. In other words, there is a, a, a more pronounced relationship between the age of a tree and the circumference of that tree. Uh, that relationship is more pronounced in tree number four, for example. Okay, we could have made, we could do a, a linear model. We're not gonna do that in this video. Anyway, I hope that was useful. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't, if you found this useful. We're doing loads of videos like this. Um, hope you're having a good day. Don't ever change, don't do drugs. Always do your best. Speak to you soon. Take care. Bye.